love this. Our book of the month for September is a romantic comedy called A Dash of Salt and Pepper. It was written by Kosoko Jackson, who focuses on highlighting LGBTQ love stories. And he joins us now along with the founder of Litzburg. We have Rachel Ekstrom Courage here as well. Thank you for coming in. Thanks for having me. All right, so let's start with the book and tell us you wrote this in a couple of months. Yeah, it just kind of spilled out of you. Um, what is it about? So A Dash of Salt and Pepper follows Xavier, who is a business school graduate who is really down on his luck. He's lost his boyfriend, his job. He moves back home to a small town, Harper's Cove, Maine. If you're a fan of Gilmore Girls, it's basically Stars Hollow. And he ends up with an amazing opportunity to get a fellowship, but he needs to raise money. So he works with a handsome chef, Logan O'Hare, who's a single father, to help revitalize his business. And it's a lot of enemies to lovers inside of a kitchen. Uh, it sounds also a little bit like a Hallmark movie. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. It sounds like a fun, <laughs> could be a fun movie too. So what can romance readers expect from this? We said it's a kind of a rom-com, right? Yeah, it's definitely a rom-com. It has a lot of funny jokes. I think it's laugh out loud funny, a little bit of slapstick. Um, it's a lot of workplace drama, a lot of food puns if you're into cooking and a lot of great recipes. But it's also a deep conversation about who you want to be when you grow up and if you've kept the ideas of who you want to be when you were younger and just growing up as a person and also finding yourself uh, when you're even older. I love those deeper conversations and the thought process that goes into it. So what inspired you to write the book? I have always loved rom-coms. I love the happiness that comes from them and the joy. This is actually my second rom-com. And I was trying to figure out in my second one what I wanted to tackle. My mom used to run a restaurant, so we have talked a lot about cooking. I am a horrible chef, but <laughs> I really wanted to do something to an homage to her in the cooking and also something with like a small town with like an age gap because those are some of my favorite stories to read. That's great. And Rachel, what did you love about this book? I love that it is so sweet and funny and very spicy. It'll keep you warm on these crisp fall days. <laughs> um, not only is there a wonderful love story you feel like the main character is your best friend telling you just an amazing story and there's a cute dog in it so I'm a big fan. <laughs> <laughs> it hits all of the marks right and Kazoko could you talk a little bit about why it's so important to write queer stories right now and highlight highlight this? Of course I mean there's so much happening in the world right now for queer kids and queer adults. I always think and remember when I was a young queer person how I didn't have good representation mm -hmm. and how it shaped my life and I knew when I wanted to be a writer I wanted to change that. I also write young adult books which is incredibly important important because some queer kids the first time they see themselves on the page or even non-queer people it's the first time they can see and learn about what it means to be queer and so I wanted to continue that into adult books funny enough when I had my first adult rom-com and I was in a bookstore signing an individual came up and said I've never seen myself as a black queer man on the page wow. and to see as even like a 60 year old never seen that positive representation how much it can mean and change somebody that is amazing yeah that you were giving, because it is, it's about representation, it's about exactly. seeing yourself and that that can exist, seeing those love stories and that being possible for right. you too. That's fantastic. Um, and so what's next for you? You've written two rom-coms. Written two rom-coms. I've written two young adult books. My next young adult book, which is a horror, comes out in October. Ooh. Yeah, very, very soon in three weeks. And then my next rom-com after this comes out in 2025. Wow, you're just chugging along all here. <laughs> That's all you do. What is your horror going to be about? I need to know more about yes. this one. Ooh, it's about a scary forest where individuals who die inside the forest, their memories are lost and a boy who has to fight a god to be able to win back these memories. All right. That sounds a little intense, but perfect for the fall. <laughs> uh, Rachel, we wanted to touch base with you too about what's coming up. Litzburg does so much to represent local authors and events. So what do you have coming up this fall? Well, first of all, let's start with Kosoko's event coming up at Pittsburgh Arts and Lectures on October 12th. He's going to be in conversation with local author Nicole Peeler talking about that new YA book we were just talking about. Um, the Forest Demands Its Due is the name Ooh. of the title of that one. Um, September 26th at White Whale in Bloomfield, we have the book launch for The Invisible World by Nora Fussner. And um, we have the Pittsburgh International Lit Fest coming up from City of Asylum on the north side, September 30th to October 15th. And all of these events and so many more are on litzburg.com on our events calendar. That's wonderful. I know you do so much to promote local Thank authors. You. That's great. Thank you so much for Thanks coming for on. Me. Congratulations on your next book. Can't wait to read the next Thank one you. too. And if you would like to purchase A Dash of Salt and Pepper, it's available on Amazon and at Barnes and Nobles. We'll be right back.